Good morning everyone, my name is Michelle, I hope you're doing well, welcome to another video. It's Saturday morning and I'm going to get straight into this one. So at risk of angering a whole lot more people, I'm going to talk about Kylie Rodney's autopsy again today. So hear me out, I know a lot of people were so angry that they left my channel, they unsubscribed yesterday and that's your call, that's fine, but please do hear me out because I gave an overview of the autopsy report and the incident report that came before the autopsy report and I brushed over some things, things like decomposition, the the fact that Kylie couldn't be positively identified at the scene because of the decomposition, those kind of things I brushed over because they are extremely distasteful and I understand that a lot of people don't want to hear that kind of stuff. But I had so many comments, so many comments that I've got to address this. I don't know how many comments I replied to, but it was a lot saying pretty much the same thing. So I thought I'm just going to do one video and get it all out there. And that comment was, how come Kylie did not have water in her lungs if she drowned? Why did she not have water in her lungs? And it's a very, very good question. Let's get into it. There is a trigger warning that I am going to be talking about decomposition. If you don't want to hear that kind of thing, when we're talking about a 16-year-old girl who's been lying there in her vehicle at the bottom of Prosser Reservoir for two weeks, it's distasteful, it's horrible, it's my worst nightmare, drowning, I've got a fear of water, so thinking about drowning, it fills me with dread, but hear me out. So we're going to explain, first of all, how the lungs work. So this is a pair of lungs. So you've got here, this is the, the main airway going from the mouth, called the trachea. And then you've got two lungs, right lung and a left lung, and the airway splits into two, and it keeps splitting into tinier and tinier kind of think of them as branches and then twigs of a tree. And the reason why the lungs are made this way is to increase the surface area inside the lungs so that the body can take in as much oxygen to breathe and expel as much carbon dioxide and toxins and so on as possible. Now, when we get to these very, very tiny ends of these little twigs, what you see are something called alveoli. So these are right at the end of the twigs. And this is where the oxygen goes into the body, carbon dioxide is returned, and you breathe it out. That's how the lungs work. Now, what happens in drowning? Well, two things can happen when you drown. So people who are submerged underwater and don't make it out, most likely, I think in most cases, water enters the lungs large amounts of water as you're gulping in trying to breathe you're also swallowing water as well and your respiratory system your lungs become waterlogged very quickly and that causes unconsciousness and death in a minority of cases we don't see water in the lungs because the vocal cords the airways go into spasm and that actually prevents water from entering the lungs, but it also prevents breathing. So you suffocate. So either way, if you're not rescued very quickly, you are going to die. And that's what we call drowning. But from Kylie's autopsy report, we don't know which one of these things happened in Kylie's case. I think this is the main issue. Because she wasn't taken out of the water quickly, we don't know whether her airways closed up and she actually died, not through large amounts of water getting into her lungs, but because her airways closed up so much that she couldn't breathe and she suffocated. We don't know. Because that body's gone through, it's gone through rigor mortis and then it's gone through two weeks of decomposition. Now, this is from the Royal College of Pathologists here in the UK, and it's guidelines on autopsy practices, autopsies for bodies recovered from water. So this is an official document from the Royal College of Pathologists. So recovery from a body of water can raise the possibility of drowning, but other possibilities exist. For example, dying of natural causes before entering the water, 
dying of unnatural causes before entering the water, i.e. foul play, and then being put in the water to make it look like it was, it, it was a drowning accident, died of traumatic or natural causes in the water, or died of the consequences of immersion. Each of these possibilities would create an alternative cause of death right, for those people who were found in water, but it was ascertained didn't die of drowning. But in Kylie's case, it was ascertained that she did die of drowning. Now, as I said yesterday, drowning in Kylie's case was, in my opinion, a diagnosis or a verdict of exclusion, that there was no other signs of ways she could have died. So there was no overdose from drugs, like she'd been overdosed intentionally or unintentionally. Yes, there was some alcohol in her body, there was THC in her body, some nicotine in her body, but each of these things wouldn't have killed her. They could be contributing factors to how she ended up in the lake, but they would not have killed her. According to the autopsy report, it was drowning that killed her. But there was also no signs of trauma. So her neck hadn't been broken, her back hadn't been broken, her skull hadn't been caved in, there was no signs of blunt force trauma, there was no signs of stabbing, gunshot, kind of things that could have occurred if foul play had been indicated. Now, as I said yesterday, because there was significant decomposition of the skin and the tissues, some things might have been masked. Some things might have been there, such as bruising. Like, let's say she'd taken part in a fight club and she got bruising or cuts. We wouldn't see that on Kylie's autopsy report because of the amount of decomposition. So there's lots of things that could have happened but we just don't know about. And I can only comment on what was there. In this document, and I'll leave a link to this in the description box, there's a lot of things that can be looked at or should be looked at according to the Royal College of Pathologists. I don't know whether these standards were followed in Kylie's case or whether they should have been followed in Kylie's case because this is how the standard for autopsies where drowning is suspected in the UK is documented. There's things like toxicology, histological examination, we know happened in Kylie's case. But specimens like blood, urine, vitreous humour, that's the contents of the eyeball, stomach contents, should be investigated. Now, in Kylie's case, we know that the, the tissue that went off for toxicology was liver tissue. Now, some people have questioned why they didn't take the vitreous humour. It's a good question. Perhaps given the significant decomposition of the face, maybe they thought that that would be compromised in some way. I would imagine that someone who'd been underwater for two weeks with significant decomposition, the amount of blood wouldn't be enough to test. So this is pertaining to why didn't Kylie have water in her lungs? Because according to the Royal College of Pathologists, these are the signs that may support a conclusion of drowning. Froth round the mouth, but this may have been washed away. So in Kylie's case, that is absolutely going to be the case because in the initial incident report that Jason Mackey did, the coroner's deputy, he said that, from facial features, a positive identification couldn't be made because of the, just the amount of decomposition. So any froth or anything would have been long gone. But then you've got frothy fluid in the airways, which also may contain materials such as silt, weed, sand, etc. And we know that there was a lot of silt and sand at the bottom of Possil Lake. We saw it over Kylie's vehicle, over distended lungs, now this is a big one, over distended lungs sometimes to the extent that they're seen to overlap when the chest is open. They may be heavy, but a normal lung weight does not exclude drowning. So you also might see the lungs being collapsed. You might also see water and debris in the stomach. When you're panicking, when you're gulping, you're also, in a lot of cases, swallowing water as well as breathing it in. 
Okay, so let's take a look at Kylie's autopsy report then. Again, there's a trigger warning here. You know, this is from Kylie's autopsy report. This is the state of Kylie's body after being in Prosser Lake from the 6th of August till her recovery on the 21st of August. So I brushed over some of this yesterday. Just bear this in mind. So body condition, the body showed obvious signs of bloating, lividity and decomposition. There was skin sloughing and no positive identification could be made due to decomposition present on the face. And it goes into more detail about just how decomposed her body was, both externally, but also internally. There were obvious signs of moderate to severe decomposition. Horrible to think about, but, you know, there's aquatic life. There's a natural process of the way the body bloats because of the gaseous buildup. It's horrible, but I'm afraid that is that is nature. So we see here, the facial features are distorted by decomposition and post-mortem positioning. The eyes are discoloured from decomposition, although there is definition between the corneas and the conjunctive eye. The anterior chambers of the eyes are discoloured from decomposition and original colour of the irises and definition of the pupils is obscured. The conjunctive eye fairy from pale maroon to pale green. So this is possibly why they didn't take vitreous fluid from the eyes because of the amount of decomposition. The soft tissues of the nose appear normally developed but distorted from decomposition. I mean, even the, the teeth are coloured pink stained from decomposition. The oral mucous membrane, so inside of the mouth, shows deterioration from decomposition with partial sloughing. There's partial exposure, so we're, we're down to the bone now here, of the mandible and maxilla, so the jaw bones. These changes all appear consistent with post-mortem decomposition rather than trauma. That demonstrates the extent to which Kylie's face, the insides of her mouth had decomposed, so any outward signs of drowning such as froth would have long gone. The decomposition that you see on the outside of the body was also apparent on the inside. The bacteria from inside her body but they also the bacteria from the lake would have acted on that body and this was one of my concerns actually. I think I talked about this um, in a video. I wondered whether they'd even be able to get any blood or tissues or fluids for toxicology and whether the whole autopsy report, including toxicology, would come back inconclusive. And that was a concern. I mean, in the Cassie Carla case, we've got Cassie's autopsy has come back undetermined. Both her cause and manner of death are undetermined. And she was buried in a shallow grave and... She'd only been there a week. Kylie's been there in the water for two weeks. So, you know, you might say, well, if it's cold water, then it would slow down decomposition. But it does appear that there's significant effects on her body that are consistent with decomposition rather than trauma. OK, so here is the respiratory system. Why is there no water in the lungs. Why aren't the lungs filled like waterlogged? Why are they weighing normally? Why are there not other signs such as alveolar damage? Well, the answer to that is here. Prominent tissue gas formation distorts the parenchymal architecture of both lungs. What do we mean by that? So the parenchyma is the functional tissue of the organ as distinguished from other types of tissues, such as cartilage or supporting tissues. So by this, we mean this. We mean the branches and the twigs and the alveoli that in life transfer oxygen and carbon dioxide. Gas formation, as a result of the decomposition, has distorted. So any damage that Kylie received taking large amounts of water into her lungs, you would not be able to see, given the amount of the decomposition. But why not the water? Well, there would have been water. 
in her lungs, assuming that she was one of the majority of drowning victims who take in a large amount of water and die as a result of that. But over the two weeks, think about the lungs as a bag and the surrounding tissues beginning to break down. The water being held in a bag over the two weeks, that water seeps out through the tissues into the surrounding tissues. Now, you can't track that because the entire body is bloated. So the fact that the lungs are of normal size and not waterlogged is because they've been there for two weeks. Her body's been there for two weeks. This isn't a victim of drowning who's been pulled out within the first few hours or the first day where, yeah, you are going to see waterlogging. You are going to see all of the things that you'd expect to see in a drowning victim. The fact that Kylie was not found even though Prosser Lake had been supposedly searched. It's terrible. There's some elements to the investigation that are absolutely terrible. And the autopsy, in its failings to be clearer, are at least in part as a result of the fact that Kylie wasn't found for so long. So this is a diagnosis or a verdict of exclusion. It's the totality of the evidence where the conclusion as to this is an accidental drowning comes in because there's no signs of foul play on the body. Now, some of that might be masked or eradicated by the decomposition, absolutely, but there's no signs that science can pick up on. So, yeah, the autopsy, the videos from the fire cameras, they can't tell us that Kylie was driving. They can't tell us whether someone else was driving who escaped. But the totality of the evidence tells us most likely, just balance of probabilities, that it was Kylie driving, that no one else was involved. Look, and, and some people said, look, Michelle, you're so desperate for Kylie to have drowned that you'll ignore, like, some obvious signs of things. Look, my opinion of what could have happened to Kylie, whether there was foul play or not, has changed over the course of this case. And I'm not wedded to any one theory. I'm never wedded to any one theory. If more information comes to light that indicates that foul play could have occurred, then let's hear it. All I can go from is the evidence that is presented as is. And the evidence that's presented as is, this is a verdict of exclusion, that in the absence of everything else, it has to be that she drowned. So... I'm sorry if that's not popular. I, I just follow the evidence. That's all I do. And I report on that evidence. There's nothing else I can do. I'm not going to try and stay popular <laughs> by trying to work in that there's this sign and that sign and the other sign of foul play. I'm not, if the evidence doesn't take me in that direction. So the chances are she was found in the back hatch because she had a minute to scramble through to the back and that's where she lost a shoe. She was panicking. Could she have got out through an open window? Yeah, maybe. But as water rushed in, as that car began to submerge and, and she was panicking, she just tried to reach air. It's horrible. And there's no, no signs, never been any signs that she was strapped in or that she was naked. These are all things that people have rumoured and people have run with and were never there in the first place. So, I don't know, shoot the messenger if you want, if you have to. But, yeah, so let me know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I've been Michelle. Hope you're well. See you in the next video. Goodbye from Miss Tillington and Miss Cassie Springer. Bye, guys.